Hi, fifth graders. It's Mrs. Carroll. I wanted to share a book with you today. It's called Guess Who My Favorite Person Is. I was thinking about you guys and how I used to read to you in first grade. And that's one of my favorite things about teaching, is reading to all of you. And I realized that you'll be moving on to middle school and my other favorite thing is seeing how you grow and change as I see you in the hallways of Cedar Grove. And I will miss seeing you. So I was gonna share this book. I used to read it when I taught fifth grade at the end of the year to my fifth graders. Because the other wonderful thing about being a teacher is that I have lots of favorite people and lots of them are you. So this is Guess Who My Favorite Person Is by Bird Baylor, illustrated by Robert Andrew Parker. Guess Who My Favorite Person Is. This book is written kind of like a poem. Like the words are just kind of down. But as I read, I'll show you the illustrations and you can just listen. You don't do that so much as a fifth grader anymore because you're great readers now yourselves. But sometimes it's fun to be read to. So let's start. I happened to be in an alfalfa field, barefoot, sort of lying down, watching ladybugs climb yellow flowers, when I saw this little farm kid, who was also barefoot, sort of lying down, watching ladybugs climb yellow flowers, helping them up again when they fell off. Want to see my favorite one, she called to me. So I went over to where she was. She pointed to a bug. To tell the truth, I couldn't see much difference between that one and about a million others. I was going back to my own part of the field when she said, now choose your favorite one. It wasn't easy because I hadn't ever practiced choosing ladybugs. But finally I did. She looked surprised. I can't believe you like that one. I passed her up about two days ago, but that's your business. For a while, we didn't talk at all. I stretched out and closed my eyes and just let the alfalfa be taller than I was. But she said, what's your favorite thing, sleeping or being awake? Awake, I said. Then wake up, and we can play the tell what your favorite thing is game. I think we are already playing it, I said. She said, we are, and it's my turn. My favorite turn is first. So I said, go ahead. She said, tell your favorite color. I said, blue. And that's actually my favorite color, too. But she said, see, you've already done it wrong. In this game, you can't just say it's blue. You have to say what kind of blue. So I said, all right, you know the blue on a lizard's belly? That sudden kind of blue you see just for a second, sometimes so blue that afterward you think you made it up? Sure, she said, I know that kind of blue. Then she told me hers, it was brown. Maybe I looked surprised because she said, not many people appreciate brown, but I don't care, I do. And the one I like the best is a dark reddish brown that's good for mountains and for rocks. You see it in steep cliffs a lot. I said, I know that kind of brown. Then it was my turn to ask. So I said, what's your favorite thing to touch? She said, my feet like mud, but my face likes wind, especially if I'm running up a hill. So I have to choose both things. I said, wait, it isn't fair to choose two favorite things. It is when you have to, she said. Any other way to play it would be silly. I could see that she was right. I said, my favorite thing to touch was kitten fur. But then I changed my mind and wanted clear creek water. 
And then I changed again. And that time I was sure my favorite thing was sand. Clean, dry, powdery desert sand. She didn't like it that I changed my mind, but all she said was, it makes the game go better if you've already thought of all your favorite things before you play. I said I would next time. Then we chose our favorite sounds. She said hers was bees, but not just one or two. She said it takes about a thousand bees buzzing in all the fields around to make the kind of loud bee sound she likes. For mine, I chose a bird I'd heard one morning in the mountains of New Mexico and never saw and never heard again and couldn't even say why I still remember it. She said it was all right that I didn't know its name. So we went on to what's your favorite place to live. She said her favorite place to live was in a tree. I said, doesn't it have to be someplace you really lived? She said, that's right, it does. And I've lived in lots of trees. She didn't say how long she lived in any tree. She lived in any tree. And I didn't ask. She said, or I said, I knew my favorite place to live, but I wasn't sure it was fair to say because I hadn't really lived there yet even though I plan to. She said the rule is that it's okay if you're pretty sure you're going to live there someday. So I said, I am. It's in a cave with foxes. That's fair, she said. I think a tree is best for summer, but a cave would be all right for winter nights. We must have named a hundred favorite things that afternoon. I remember that her favorite dream is flying. She said it is so easy in that dream, looking down on little hills and valleys, flapping her arms when she wants to go higher. She said she dreamed it seven times. Mine is finding turquoise beads when I'm just walking along, not really looking, not trying to find them. I dreamed it once over a year ago. Her favorite thing to see moving is fish underwater. Mine is falling stars. Her favorite thing to taste is snow and honey mixed a little more honey than snow. Mine is bread just baked at home, still warm. Her favorite smell is the alfalfa growing in this field. Mine is desert rain, not rain anywhere else. Her favorite shape is zigzag. Mine is round. Finally, I said, what's your favorite time of day? And she said, now. Just about now, when I've been running in the field and getting out of breath and falling down and watching ladybugs and finding someone to play the tell what your favorite thing is game and playing it, and then maybe walking back as far as the road together. I was going to say sunrise is my favorite time of day, but when I thought about it, I wanted to choose now too. I wasn't sure she'd let both of us choose the same thing, but she was nice about it. She said we can. That's my favorite way to end the game. By then, it was getting late, so we walked back as far as the road together. And that's the end of the book. So, thanks for being some of my favorite people. And even though this is difficult, I hope you have some favorite things that you are doing now and have even more in middle school and high school and throughout your whole life. Bye for now.